lots of activity. So they bustle in and out and in and out. Without the queen, there would be no more brood, there would be no more eggs, and as these workers' lifespans run out, the colony would cease to exist. Alright everybody and welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now today I'm on the hunt for the favorite food of this little creature on my hat. Today I'm looking for the red harvester ant or Pagonomyrmex barbatus. Now these were once a, an extremely common species throughout the entirety of Texas and the southwestern United States, but they have since had a decline in population due to things like pesticides and the spread of the invasive fire ant. So we're going to poke around and see if we can find any big mature colonies to show you guys just how cool and unique these little red harvester ants are. So let's go. Oh, put your finger. Let's go. No, no, no. That's right. All right, so we've just come across quite an impressively sized colony. Let's take a look. So this is pretty typical of a Pagonomyrmex barbatus nest. They're usually about a meter or so in diameter, about three, three and a half feet wide, and they clear all this. You might think, well, maybe they just look for open spaces, and they do to some degree, but they actually will cut down grass, they'll move pebbles, and they'll do all sorts of landscaping. So come and take a look here. You might be wondering, what is all this? This? is the chaff essentially that they have separated the grass seeds and grains from because like the name would suggest these ants harvest their food so what they do is they search for grains for seeds and insects and they bring them back to their colony and they actually will mulch all this food up into a type of bread that they use to survive. So very similar to our farming groups of ants in the tribe Atini, Pagonomyrmex also kind of create their own food. But look at these beautiful, beautiful ants. And you can see this foraging trail as well is cleared. See all the way up there, that is the path of least resistance and that is also intentional. So what they're doing is they're removing debris and they're moving things out of the way so that they can forage for seeds. Here's one coming in with a seed. So that they can forage for insects and so that they can forage for grain. Oh, I've got one on my boot here. Don't sting me. Now, surprisingly, although they're decently small, um, these ants are one of our most toxic genera of ants in the United States. So these ants can pack a pretty painful sting. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. If you're interested in learning about the sting of harvester ants, hop on over and check out our rough harvester ant sting video. So I'm not going to do a sting video with these gals just because I'd rather not disturb them. And I want to show you guys how cool ants can be without getting stung by them. But I, I am definitely impressed by the stings of these ants for sure, for sure. Uh, another really, really cool fact about these beautiful ants is that their genus means bearded ant, Pogonomyrmex. And that refers to these long kind of hairs that they have towards the head. And that's kind of strange, isn't it? You wouldn't think of an ant having a beard, but in fact, some ants do. Despite the fact that all these workers are, you guessed it, female. So a bunch of bearded ladies running around and killing insects and gathering seeds to feed all their larvae Pretty neat. But take a look at this entry hole. This is a nice, good sized hole here for lots and lots of activity. So they bustle in and out and in and out. And what's really cool about these ants is that probably just a few inches under the surface is their brood, their larvae and their eggs. And that's because these ants really 
benefit from having a lot of heat at their disposal, which is great if you live in the southwestern United States. I mean, it was freaking 98 degrees all day. And so what they do is when the sun hits these nests, they move all their larvae and pupa up to the top. Being cold-blooded, when they use that heat, they can grow much quicker and much faster uh, to become adult ants and then go on to help the colony. Now, as workers, these ants have a, a month to three months to kind of live and support the colony, but the queen, she can live for many, many years, possibly even up to an over 10 years. Now, the queens live so long because they are the lifeblood of these colonies. Without the queen, there would be no more brood, there would be no more eggs, and as these workers' lifespans run out, the colony would cease to exist. So that's why these beautiful little ants need their queen. Wow, aren't these beautiful? Some of my absolute favorite groups of ants to find um, in America, just because they're so big, they're so charismatic, they're always busy kind of bustling around looking for cool stuff, and they're just pretty. They're nice, beautiful red with hairs all over the head, the thorax, the abdomen, and just really sizable, really cool ants. Well, I think that's all I have time for for today. Uh, we got some really cool shots of these gals earlier that I'll include in this video, but I hope you guys learned something about the red harvester ant, Pagana myrmex barbatus. One of, me, one of my, again, favorite species of ants to encounter here while I'm in South Texas. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, buy the new merchandise. This is one of the new ones. This is Widows of the World. Ton of Latrodecta species, super cool. Um, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any more of the new videos. I'm trying to release two ep episodes minimum per week. So stay tuned, stay watching, stay supporting. And tune in next time for the next episode of Jack's World of Wildlife.